Hi, I'm Peter Whittle. Now, you might have seen a recent report which claimed that only 1% of visitors to Britain's great national parks are from ethnic minority backgrounds. Now, the mere fact that such a report was written suggests a presumption of a problem, which in this case was obviously that the countryside was racist. We've heard this one before, of course. It joins the long list of racist things which now seem to dominate our news and media landscape. Britain is systemically racist. British history is racist. Britain's monuments are racist. Much of Britain's past cultural output is therefore racist. Gardening is racist. The idea of a meritocracy, that ability should be the deciding factor in success, is racist now. A colorblind society is racist. Punctuality is racist. White people are inherently racist. Now that last one, quite literally, cannot be denied. Because if you do, if you say, I am not racist and I don't believe this country is racist, then according to the critical race theory that now dominates our institution, this is absolute proof of your racism. It's a form of Stalinist doublethink. And it brings to mind the notorious ducking stalls of the Middle Ages, where floating on water was proof of guilt and drowning was proof of innocence. You were simply condemned either way. Of course, none of that list above I said is true. Indeed, a recent massive global report from the Policy Institute of King's College London showed that Britain is one of the least racist countries on the planet, with the British being amongst the most accepting and tolerant of peoples. Yet, in the past few years, the narrative we hear everywhere is that this country is a uniquely racist hellhole. This amounts to an ongoing slander on the British people. Amazing, isn't it, that given this, so many hundreds of thousands of people still want to come here. But I believe that many of those people who propagate this narrative don't even believe it. First of all, there's a lot of money to be made in the grievance and victimhood industry. But far more importantly, and I think this is crucial, it is a very effective way of attacking the nation and indeed Western society in general. It seeks to delegitimize the very foundations of our society and everything about our way of life. Because it dominates our institutions from schools to the civil service, it has made great headway. But the vast majority of people do not agree. The vast majority are not only not racist, they are proud too of our country and its history. But there's no denying the enormous daily pressure we face. It is, after all, hard to live through what is an attempt at a cultural revolution. It can seem that one is entirely alone. But you're not alone. We are the majority. We are not racist and we are proud. Some time ago, I listed on our channel the extraordinary ways in which this country has been good for the world. It was an incomplete list because our contributions have been so vast. We must never, ever forget these things, despite what our schools teach, what our museums say, or what our media propagates. I'll repeat that list now, and I urge you to pass it on far and wide. Thank you. Parliamentary democracy. The world's first industrial revolution. Charles Darwin and the concept of evolution. William Shakespeare. Isaac Newton and the laws of gravity. The World Wide Web as invented by Tim Berners-Lee. English, the global language. The concept of common law. The King James Bible. The scientific method as developed by Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Francis Drake, Joseph Lister, Alexander Fleming and Penicillin, The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, Charlie Chaplin, Turner, Cartwright and the invention of power looms, the mass production of steel, Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen, football, cricket, 
rugby, golf, almost all organized sport. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, William Harvey and the Human Circulation System, James Bond, the invention of Ian Fleming, Frank Whittle and the Jet Engine, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, The Smallpox Vaccination by Edward Jenner, The Steam Engine, John Milton's Paradise Lost, The Cat Scanner, Harry Potter, as created by J.K. Rowling. The structure of DNA, as discovered by Francis Crick and James Watson. Sherlock Holmes, the creation of Arthur Conan Doyle. The world's first modern postal service. Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot, the creations of Agatha Christie. The Beatles, Sir Alfred Hitchcock. The music of Edward Elgar. Charles Dickens, David Bowie, 1984 by George Orwell. Electromagnetism, developed by Michael Faraday. Railways, Viagra, Florence Nightingale and modern nursing. The abolition of the slave trade and Sir Winston Churchill.